Thanks, Dr. Corda. Uh, I'd like to thank the Count Corda for choosing this very serious issue. Minister, I want to read you a statement from Ulwyn Rowe from Wexford, the sister of Kenneth Rowe, who took his own life. Kenneth was a good friend to two of my sons. Families and friends live many nightmares when a loved one dies by suicide. When there is no warning, the shock and the pain are immense beyond words. But sometimes there are warning signs and there's the unthinkable nightmare of seeing your loved one decline, seeing their distress and repeatedly trying to access professional support for them, but hitting wall after wall. You watch your loved one fighting for their life without the professional help they desperately need. You try to believe the experts who say that you're overreacting, but you're terrified you'll get the call or the guardee will come to your door and then the dark day comes and your world falls apart. Kenneth was 32. He was independent, private and self-reliant. But when he hit a crisis, he knew he needed help. With support of Kenneth's GP and others, Kenneth tried to get help. My parents spent countless days and nights sitting with Kenneth as he battled his anguish, wrapping him in the light of their love. They worked tirelessly to get him the care he needed. It was like watching a train hurtle towards an abyss and begging for help from the experts only to be told we were exaggerating, we were overprotective, he'd be fine, it was Christmas and there was no appointments, he should get back to work, work stress was normal, he should drink less coffee and get more exercise, he should take the increasing number and doses of medication he was being prescribed, all without any ongoing support. Kenneth was failed by both the public and private mental health services in this country. It's difficult now to meaningfully engage with those who were asked to provide care for Kenneth to see why these health systems failed him, whether it was individual failure, shortage in resources, lack of expertise, lack of compassion, lack of understanding. We heard University Hospital Waterford was under pressure for beds, that patients were being admitted and kept in chairs. Can you imagine how awful it is hoping a family member would be admitted for psychiatric care and being terrified of whether or not that service would be fit for purpose? Whether the hell that he was living through as he tried to get on with his daily life was better than the hell of being admitted to an overstretched mental health facility. Kenneth was sent home from Waterford Hospital three times in five days. Imagine our despair that in spite of an urgent referral from Waterford to Summerhill Community Mental Health Service, Kenneth's appointment was for six weeks later. The wait was impossible. We were told Kenneth couldn't access mental health services in an honoured public hospital. As Kenneth's crisis deepened, we attempted to access private mental health services at St Pat's in Dublin. This was an honour disaster, an honour failure. There was nowhere else to turn. Kenneth fought so hard to stay alive. For everyone and everything he loved. I'm sorry. But he didn't, he didn't make it. He ended his life 19 days before his appointment at Summer Hill. Did he shook? gave the opening speech at the Pieta House Darkness into Light event. Yet his government has failed to give adequate funding to mental health services. Suicide rates in Wexford are a lot higher than the national average. Yet no emergency mental health services exist in Wexford. Charities like Pieta House and the Samaritans do good work, but their supports cannot replace the complex, complex psychological Time and psychiatric added. care that should be provided by the HSE mental health services. You have a further two minutes. Yeah, I just, I just finished. Uh, going to call, uh, in the middle of our grieving and the unspeakable pain, it's hard not to feel anger and rage about a health system that is inadequate, underfunded, and criminally Minister. absent in some parts of this country. Deputy. It I feels like no important. one who can actually make a difference cares. Dep Minister, please. Kenneth gave so generously of his time and resources that he always gave the impression of having plenty, even when he was struggling to make ends meet. He has left little by way of material goods, but his legacy is immense.
Okay, we're moving on. The many acts of kindness is the he wove in the bill. fabric of his life. His unremitting intolerance for bullshit, his courage to stand and up for the people he loved, advantage. for people who needed support during Minister, difficult times, uh, his honourable commitment to doing his work well. Would that we had a future with him. Deputy, he didn't want to die. You'll get no second intervention. Minister. Uh, last Concorda, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Deputy Mick Wallace for raising this very, very important issue. And it was a very powerful and sad letter to hear about Kenneth Rowe's story, a young man aged 32, and I totally accepted that and I offered my deepest sympathy to the family. But can I say as well, the important thing is that we have to deal with the issue. And I don't doubt your sincerity and the integrity of the issues that you raised here today. But can I assure the Deputy that tackling suicide is a priority for the Government. Under the care of my department, a cross-sectoral steering group was established to assist the National Office for Suicide Prevention in implementing Connecting for Life, Ireland's national strategy to reduce suicide. This is a six-year strategy running from 2015 to 2020. The National Office for Suicide Prevention is part of the HSE and was specifically established to coordinate suicide prevention efforts around the country and to implement Connecting to Life. To support the National uh, Office of Suicide Prevention, funding increased from 3.7 million in 2010 to the current level of 12 million. An additional 2.75 million was provided in 2015 for an additional resource officers for suicide prevention and for priority actions under Connecting for Life. Wexford's local Connecting for Life plan was launched in January 2016 and is aligned to the national strategy. As suicide affects each person in the community, this local plan is a collaboration by individuals, by statutory and non-statutory bodies in the communities around Wexford. It is built on the work already begun in Wexford since the initial countrywide plan was launched in 2004. The work of NOSP has helped to reduce the number of suicides in Ireland from 495 in 2010 to 392 in 2017. It must be noted that the 2017 figures are provisional and by nature are subject to change and so should be interpreted with the caution at this time. The NOSP's efforts in suicide prevention include training programmes such as Safe Talk and Assist. In addition, the Little Things campaign focuses on measures we can all do to protect our own mental health and to support the people we care about. Children and adolescents who present with uh, suicidal ideation in Wexford, depending on their presentation, presenting problem, may be referred to a number of services, including a school counsellor, teen counselling services in the Ferns Diocesan uh, Service, the HSE Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service in Wexford, CAMS, and the HSE Primary Care Community Psycholo Psychology Services, the HSE Self-Harm Intervention Programme, SHIP. In addition, the report of the National Task Force on, on Youth Mental Health has a number of recommendations on youth mental health and have been uh, incorporated in the service plans of lead agencies and priorities for 2018 and 19. Additionally, the Pathfinder project will be the first of its kind, will bring together officials from a number of relevant departments in a human focus on youth and mental health. And of course, this work will include the implementation of the recommendations of the National Task Force on Youth Mental Health. But of course, once again, uh, despite what we said here, nothing is going to bring back that young, lovely young man that you talked about, uh, Deputy Mick Wallace, Kenneth Rowe, and of course, the sadness in his sister's heart. I totally accept that point. But we have to develop and support mental ser health services that will help young people, and young men in particular, like Kenneth. Thank you. Deputy Wallace, two minutes. <clears throat> Minister. I don't personalise this, and I don't blame any one minister. I had, a pen, I had a pint with Kenneth Rowe a few weeks before he died, but he'd gone. And he needn't have been gone. And I'm sorry, Finian. And I know I've heard the line of services and what's this, that, and the other, but the people of Wexford will tell you that the services are not there for them. They're watching young people die. 
there isn't the help that they need there for them. In the last month alone, a 13-year-old boy and a 15-year-old girl have committed suicide in Wexford. Wexford has the highest suicide rate in the country. There's a serious problem. And, I mean, Alwyn, his sister, said that the government has failed to give adequate funding to mental health services in Wexford. And that's the truth. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. And this government and the last one have both failed to actually come up to the mark to give the services required. Ask the people down there. People text me and ring me so often. Why can't you do something about it? What are you doing up there? What's going on? How come nothing is changing? How come the government are not dealing with this? Do they not care? And I mean, I'm feeling, I, and I don't personalise it. I don't blame any one individual. But I do say that this government and the last government has failed the people of Wexford that have had problems around the mental health area. They have not served them well. And that's the truth. And for God's sake, please change it. Something has to give. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Uh, thank you, Ken Cora. I mean, I absolutely, uh, totally agree with that we have to do something in relation to this particular issue. And the fact that you mentioned a 13 year old and a 15 year old actually makes the other situation even worse. But can I say that uh, to, to Deputy Mick Wallace, I can be rest assured from Minister Jim Daly's point of view, uh, in conjunction with the Department of Health and HSE, will continue to enhance the policies and service to reduce the incidence of suicide in Ireland. That's the first commitment. The second commitment, of course, I've looked at the stats, and you're right about Rexford, and I've seen the figures here. The three-year move and average rate of suicide by 100,000 population by county of residents deceased 2004 to 2017. The national average was 8.8 .8 around Ireland. In Wexford, it's 11.1. So, I mean, you're, what you're saying, I totally accept. And the only commitment I'm going to do is, I'm not going to make any false promises here, but I will go back to Minister Jim Daly and highlight this issue and make sure to include that when they're developing services and developing services, that Wexford, because of its own statistics, speak for themselves and because of the information that you've given me today, that I think that so we have to have action. Suicide is a very serious problem. We cannot afford to be losing young people like Kenneth Rowe. And I will give you a commitment that I go back to Minister Jim, uh, Jim Daly and that he will act over the next couple of months. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister.